if you have ever watched a YouTube video or you've listened to a podcast and you've gone, why do I have to crank up the volume so much to be able to hear it? It's because whoever put that podcast out isn't doing this step. Let's talk about some sound. We can absolutely go into audition if I wanted to, but I really have been pleasantly surprised by what you can do with the essential sound panel. And that's what I'm gonna show you, okay? Mainly it's because that it's it's clearly not as good as going into an a, a audio editor, but it's really good for, for doing very simple things to your audio. If your audio is pretty clean, I really am not of the mind that you have to over process your audio, but to do a little bit of cleanup, to do a little bit of leveling, I think it's worth doing. So let's just come over to our essential sound panel. And one of the things that Premiere will do is it will automatically find and assign what it thinks your sound is. I'm not always a fan of that, so I'm just gonna hit clear audio just to show you what this looks like. But this is the essential sound panel. So it's set up to auto tag. I, you know, I'll take it kind of most of the time, but I have found that depending on like what the audio is, it can sometimes give me the wrong audio. So I like to do this just myself. So we can choose dialogue, we can choose music, we can use sound effects. Ambience, that's that's stuff you have like sound effects, they're supposed to be like wind or stuff. So if you're doing an immersive audio project, you could use that. I'm gonna use just dialogue and music for our example. So I've selected both of my talking bits here. I'm gonna hit dialogue. And now I get all of the cool things that I can do with this audio, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do, and this is something that I do no matter what, okay? I'm gonna hit the loudness button and hit auto match, okay? If you ever have had a podcast interview where yourself and your co-host or your guest are talking at different levels and you've tried everything you can to try to level it out, maybe use level later, this basically does the exact same thing. It looks at the audio files and it tries to sum it to a common luff amount, okay? So if I hit auto match, it's gonna analyze it and it's gonna automatically adjust the waveform to be at negative, I think it's, what is it? Negative 23 luffs, okay? Now you might be saying, well, Brian, that's not, you know, that's not the loudness level that Spotify or Apple Podcasts told me, and you're right, but we're gonna fix that upon export, okay? This is just to, in the project, get everything summed to that level, okay? So that's taken care of. Let's go to our music, and you can see, this one did pull it in per perfectly. It chose it as music, and I'm gonna hit again the auto match button which is gonna go through and you can see the waveform just kind of shrunk down a little bit, okay? It just applied a little bit of adjustment to it. And this set its loudness level to negative 25 lefts, okay? So a little bit quieter. That's okay, that's what we want. So that's kind of been done to our audio. All right, let's select our dialogue. And we can do some other things to this. Now, Adobe does have the enhanced speech feature, which I gotta tell you, I'm not 100% a fan of. I think it still has some kinks to work out. If you use the Adobe Enhance feature and you love it, please let me know how you're using it because I, I'm, I'm still finding problems with it. I think it's really good if you have like really bad audio to begin with, but if you're recording with a nice mic like I am, you know, you might not find a lot of use from it. Some processes I do use sometimes are the de -esser. If you've got a mic like a Rode Pod mic, it is pretty harsh, so you can turn that on. And I like to dial these things down really low. I don't want a lot of processing on this. You also can do things like reduce noise. Be mindful though, that this is not a true noise reduction like you would see inside of Audition. This is a very simple effect that's done inside of this project, but it is, it's good enough, honestly. And I think that's the, the way you gotta think about this is that yes, you can spend a lot of time in Audition. Yes, you can spend a lot of time in Reaper or Hindenburg but this is designed to get it very down and dirty and out the door, right? And if you're recording really good audio to begin with, you might not need to do a whole ton of processing. Yeah. Outside of that, we have dynamics. So this is basically a compressor that we can turn on. We also have EQ and the EQ is pretty fun. So you can use this as an EQ. I'm actually gonna only select my audio for this one and choose that as an EQ and choose a preset. So we can choose, you know, podcast voice. And again, just like with the DSer, I, I really like to turn these down a ton. I don't like to add a lot of processing to this because, 
you know, once you start analog processing, you can get a lot of artifacts. So if you, the podcast voice is just going to add a little bit of boost in the bass level and the DSer is going to just clamp down a little bit of the harsh tones. And, you know, the pod mic gives a lot of harsh tones in my opinion. Um, great mic, but just one thing. Now for my co-host, John, I'm actually going to do something different. Okay. I'm going to use the audio track mixer, which is kind of the old fashioned way of doing some audio EQing. Now the audio track mixer for you audio nuts out there is going to look really familiar. So right at the top, we can see that John is on track two, which is a two right here. You can of course go in and you can name it something different, but just like with any sort of audio plugin, you can add in all sorts of things. I'm going to apply just the regular parametric equalizer, double click that. And this is quite literally the exact same EQ that you get inside of audition. Okay. So if you use audition and you like working with audition, you like working with those plugins, you can bring them in, in premiere. And as long as they're on a, say a single track, you can add these in. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit of roll off on his low end. I'll boost it a slight bit because his microphone always is a little tinny. Uh, and we'll do a little bit of a mid cut, you know, just to add a bit of presence in the high end. Okay. Now, yes, I'm not listening to this, um, but I just, I know his voice so well because we've done, you know, 322 episodes together that I kind of know what, what works well for him. So we've got our episode here. I want to export this thing out. Let's go up to export and we've got our export settings. I pretty much keep it standard, whatever it is default. Okay. For the, if we're doing a video version now where it gets fun is under effects. And this is, this is worth a solo shot here. Okay. Solo shot. This is worth talking about. If you have ever watched a YouTube video or you've listened to a podcast and you've gone, why do I have to crank up the volume so much to be able to hear it? It's because whoever put that video podcast out or whoever put that audio podcast out isn't doing this step. Okay. And it is loudness normalization. Okay. This is so important because this is going to enable you to make sure that your audio levels are at that standard level for both audio podcasts and video podcasts. Okay. It's worth a solo shot talking about. Let's jump over to here. So under effects, we've got a bunch of effects that we can add. Consider these like post-processing effects. The one we want to do is loudness normalization. Okay. Now you'll get some scary things that pop up here of what is the standard you're going to use. And all we're basically saying is that we want to set the audio to a standard level. That's it. Now you can use the ATSC one here. I don't use that because I can't change this target loudness section here. The one that I use and what I suggest you all use is ITU BS 177 dash three. And the reason I choose this one is because I can then come into here and change my target loudness. So if you're a podcaster, you're familiar with the idea of LUFs, right? Spotify might want negative 16 or negative 14. Apple Podcasts might want a different one. So this is where you can set that LUF amount, okay? So I'm going to set it because this is just what I do. I like negative 16. You do you. Whatever level you like, you use that. But negative 16 works for me. Tolerance, I'll keep what it is. Max True Peak. This is what the loudest decibel level your waveform is going to be. So if you want it going right up against like negative one, have it change this to negative one. If you want to be a little bit quieter and go down to negative three, you can make it negative three. I like kind of hitting the middle of negative two. That's just me. And all this loudest normalization is it's basically a limiter. That's all it's doing. It's looking at your audio with everything combined. And because we did some stuff with essential sound where we leveled everything out to that negative 23 already, it's just adding a little bit of boost to get it up to that proper loudness across the entire video and audio file.